Hi, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with a Frugal Crafter for Kids project. We're going to make this really fun basket out of newspaper. It's really easy, it's very inexpensive, and you can do it with stuff you already have around the house. And, best of all, this project can be done by kids without any help from mom or dad. What you're going to need is a cardboard box, which you'll open up and take apart, a um, cereal box or cracker box, anything like that with thin cardboard will be good. You'll need a newspaper, a pair of scissors, a pencil, a bottle of white glue such as Elmer's glue all, and something round to trace like a plate or I've just got this little circle template I'm going to use. But anything round is going to be fine. You want to make sure the thing that you trace is the size that you want your basket to be. So I use this template to make a basket this big. So let's go to the table and I'm going to show you how to make this awesome basket. Start by opening up your newspaper. You'll want to take um, one of the signatures out, which is a signature is just basically a folded clump of paper. Open it up. And we've got several sheets here, but the cool thing is we can cut many of these sheets at once because newspaper is really thin. What you want to do is fold this piece in half. And you'll end up with a stack of paper that's about six inches wide by um, almost two feet long. Use your scissors to cut along this fold. And don't worry if it's not perfect because this is all going to be rolled in and you're not going to see any wobbly lines. Just do your best. Now one of these sides will have a fold on it so you just want to go in, open it up with your, scissors, with your um, fingers and just cut along that line with your scissors again. You could even cut more than this amount of pages at once. Do whatever's comfortable for you. And if you do want mom and dad's help, this is a great project to have them do for you. All right, you'll need to make a bunch of those to make a basket. And then what you do is you take each piece separately and a pencil, and you're gonna roll up the paper. You can put it however it's most comfortable for you. But I just start at one corner, tuck it in nice and tight, and start rolling. I like to leave my pencil hanging out just a little bit on the end so I can pull it out later. Because the more you do this, the better you're going to get at it, and your rolls will be so tight that it'll be hard to remove the pencil later. All right. If you find it's a little bigger on one end, just give it a twist, and that will tighten it right back up. Now, you simply put a little glue on the end, on this triangle that's sticking out here. Just use your regular white glue. And continue to roll it up. And you'll have to hold this for a few seconds until it dries. Now, I went ahead and I made a bunch of these ahead of time. Uh, but you'll probably need to make 30 or 40 of these for your basket. So this is a great thing to do if you're just chilling out um, and you want something kind of fun to do while you're watching TV. You can make a bunch of these or you're watching a favorite movie or whatever. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make the bottom for our basket. So open up a box as carefully as you can. You should be able to find all your supplies right out in your recycling bin or ask mom and dad to save them for you. All right, then use your pencil to trace this circle two times. Remember, you can use a dinner plate, a snack plate, a roll of masking tape, anything you want to get your circle shape. You don't have to have a fancy scrapbooking template like I'm using. Any circle will work just fine. And you can use different things to make different size baskets. You could trace a coffee mug and make a pencil cup. You could um, trace something bigger and make a big yarn basket. Think of all the wonderful presents you can make for Christmas this year. And then just use your scissors to cut this out. We're cutting out two so that we'll have an extra sturdy bottom on our basket. Now really little kids probably need mom and dad's help for this. Or big brother and big sister, that's fine too. This is a great project to do with your Girl Scout group, Boy Scout group, classroom, Sunday school. It's a great cross-curriculum project if you're teaching about Native Americans. 
with their rich tradition in basket making because we're using the same techniques that people have used for hundreds and thousands of years. All right. So now what we're going to do is take one of these saw, these uh, pieces and we're going to take six of our uh, tubes that we made and we're going to make the um, pieces to weave on for our baskets. So we're going to cut these in half. I've got a grid on my um, on my cutting board so I can cut them in half pretty pretty easily. And they don't have to be perfect. Don't worry about that. Some of my strips are longer than the other. Whoops, and that one just unrolled. You know what? Don't cut them in half. Let's do something else. We'll cut one of them in half, but the other the other uh, the other five will keep together. Don't mind that. We're going to keep five together or we're going to have one that's cut because we can glue them down all together like that. Sorry about that. You see, even grown-ups make mistakes. Not a big deal. Use your white glue or with a parent's help, you can use a hot glue gun to glue these to your base. Now please watch me do this step before you jump ahead and do it yourself. Now if you're using white glue, you do the same exact thing. Um, but you'll put, you'll have to wait it under a book when you're all done gluing. I'm going to put my, I'm going to flatten them out as we go. So this, if you're using a hot glue gun, that's a job for a parent or another adult, or you can use the white glue and we'll weight it down with a, um, with a book overnight so that it doesn't move on you. Now we need an odd number of these um, of these these strips because otherwise you won't be able to weave. You always need an odd number when you're weaving. All right, so I've got I've got uh, five strips, so that makes ten spokes on our wheel. So I need to get this eleventh one in there. So I'm going to add it in right there. Wherever I seem to have the biggest gap is where I'm going to stick it in. Actually, there I got a pretty big gap there. I'll put it there. So then what you want to do is put another layer of glue on top and glue that down and put a book on it and let it dry for an hour or two. Or if you are using hot glue, you can, um, you can just press it for a minute or two and then go right to working on it. So if you're using white glue for this step, you will want to put a book on it and let it sit for an hour or two. But if you've got hot glue, then you're all set to begin the next step. Just remember, I'm going to say it again because I don't want anybody getting hurt. If you use hot glue, have an adult help you with that, please. All right, you can also press down your tubes if you want to. All right, so now we start weaving. One thing I forgot to mention that you should get are some clothespins. So I'm going to go grab those and I'll be right back. See, even grumps forget things too. So take a clothespin and your glue. Put a glue, put a little bit of glue on one of the spokes. Then you're going to take a strip and you're going to press it into that glue. Then you're going to use a clothespin to hold it in place while you begin to weave. The newspaper is very absorbent, um, so it will dry pretty quickly and it will be very strong once it dries with the glue. So that clothespin is going to kind of help it until it holds, until it, the glue starts sticking. So I'm going behind this strip. I'm going to go in front of this one and just keep going behind and in front of until I get all the way around. And if it helps, you can flatten out these strips. If it helps make them a little more bendy, it doesn't matter. So you really, there's no way to mess this up. It's a little awkward at first. Once you get the first couple rounds done, it becomes quite easy. So parents, if you're helping your kids out with this, just know that it's going to get a lot easier once they get a few of the, uh, the rows done. This craft is probably best for ages 8 and up. Alright, now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to add another... Um, I'm just going to add that in there with my clip here, where I'm going to need to add another strip. So what you do is you get another piece of newspaper and you're just going to glue it to that one. And I will secure that with a clothespin here. Probably about the time I come around um, with the next 
with the next strip, I'll be able to remove the first clothespin because it does dry quick. That's a great thing about this white glue, it dries quick. Um, I think that the regular white glue works better than the washable school glue because um, it's more permanent and it will protect against the wear and tear of, um, you know, just life, I guess. Bend this as you go. As I said, it's very awkward at first, but then once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quickly. After you get a couple of rows down, all of the, um, all the little spokes start sticking up and it makes it a lot easier to weave. I'm just going backwards and forwards each time. Okay, so we've come back around and we're back at that first one again. We'll go behind that. I think you can remove that clip because we know that glue dries pretty quickly. And well, I think I can remove that one too. And we're gonna add another strip. So one strip will go around um, a little bit more than once. Put our glue on. Add another strip. It doesn't hurt to overlap it a little bit. And I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna clip this right down over like that. I try to clip it so it's also um, clipping to something else just to give it a little extra support as we work. And you're going to continue on in this fashion until you've got to the um, probably to almost to the top of your shortest spoke. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll be right back when we've got um, a bunch of our strips on and we're up a little bit higher. I just wanted to show you what I meant about how much quicker and easier it goes um, the further along you go because the basket becomes more sturdy and stable and you can quickly weave around there. But just to, anytime you're crafting, take your time. Crafting is fun, so you should enjoy the process. Don't worry if it looks a little crazy to begin with. Most crafts do. It usually takes a little while for everything to, to get going. Each time you have to start a new a new strip, just remove the old clip and add the new one. Just make sure you keep that in front of behind pattern with your weaving going. And around and around we go. Where we stop, nobody knows. Well, when we get to the top, we'll stop. I guess we all know that, don't we? <laughs> We're almost there. We're getting really close. As you go, you can also slide down your um uh, whoops, I got off my thing there. You slide down your, your tubes, every your strips of newspaper. Every time you go, slide them down so that you get a nice, neat, tight weave there. And it will help your basket be sturdier. You could use a larger circle to begin with and make a really cute trash can or make your own personalized desk accessories, teachers, presents. Really, there's so much you can do with this fabulous craft. Now don't worry if you see something come unglued as you go, like this one came undone. Add a little bit more glue if you need to. Press it down and just get a, a clip back in there. There's always room to squeeze another clip in there if you have to, so don't worry about that. If you get real nervous, you can always ask mom or dad for help. All right, and we're gonna keep on adding till we get to the top and I'll be back and show you how to finish this off. All right, I'm finishing up my last row. You can stop your basket as soon as it's as big as you want it to be. Just found the one I hadn't woven properly there. But I think this is just about right for me. And then I'm just going to wrap this last piece around and glue it down. and secure it with a clip. And then you're gonna work the um, pieces of your basket over and tuck them in. So if it's, a, if it's a piece that ends on the inside, you're gonna fold it over the outside and just tuck it in. And I like to add a little bit of glue there because that's just gonna make it a little bit stronger. So tuck it in under the next um, weave of the basket. 
you can actually tuck it under a couple to make it extra strong. Don't worry if you get a little um, messy glue out of there, it's going to dry clear. So the next one you're going to actually tuck, you're going to fold over and tuck to the inside, and, but you're going to do the exact same thing. And you're going to push it right under the basket weave and pull it through and secure it with a little glue. I'm going to go around the basket do the whole, uh, and tuck in your ends, weaving the stri the the pieces that are towards the inside, weaving them to the outside and vice versa. And adding a little glue for security. This makes a nice rugged basket. Now to finish it off, you can paint it with acrylic paints. You can um, spray paint it. You can just coat it with a um, layer of glue if you like the, uh, the pattern just the way it is, if you don't want to add any color to it. The basket that I made here for an example, I had got a really cool newspaper in Chinatown and it had all kinds of Chinese writing on it so I wanted that to show through so I used watercolors to paint it and then I gave it a coat of glue to seal it up afterwards. Um, so when that's all dry you won't see any of those white globs, it dries clear. So you can do that or if you choose to paint it with acrylic paints, you really don't even need to glaze it. You can if you want to, it's always a good idea, but it's not 100% necessary because your acrylic paint kind of has that glue in it already and will make it very durable. So um, if you use temper paint or poster paint, I would still go ahead and add some glaze just because you want this. You've spent time on this and you want it to last and look really nice. Now I saw these in Bed Bath & Beyond selling for $10 and up. And look at this, you can make it at home using stuff you already have. I think that's awesome. So there you have it. I'll finish tucking the rest of these in later. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment on my blog and I will get back to you. I'll also have um, more information, a full supply list on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. There's a link below so you can go there and I'll put a full supply list on YouTube as well. I want to thank you so much for watching and I hope you had a great time with this project. Um, and as always, happy crafting.